Your pants, by the way, nice. Okay, thank you. You're stupid. <laughs> thank you. I'm a very particular, you, you yeah. Well. <laughs> Piazza in Bologna. It's great. Fantastic. Ah, oh, yes, sorry, I completely forgot that I have my glasses on. I'm sorry, because I have this like super effect. Sorry, I completely forgot because I, I usually don't do. It's important to see people's eyes, you know? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I like to do things. I just cannot just sit just down. sit. I, this is already. I am just 31 years old. Like it doesn't mean that like I'm gonna stay here. I constantly want to do this. I constantly try new things. I, I talk with my mentor Ada Pesen, and I ask him questions. He gives me answers. He tells me what is better, what is healthier, what is gonna be much better for for my voice. And, uh, and that's why I feel like I'm still doing progress day by day, you know, and that's why I can do those kind of things because I work a lot still. <laughs> Plus I have my, my mentor to, to check, uh, check on him with, with like from time to time. The thing is that like I uh, know that my breakdancing skills maybe are not used in a breakdancing way in theaters, but it gives me comfort of being aware what I'm doing, and my gestures are uh, conscious, and like I know what I'm what I'm saying, and I know the meaning of the words, and I can also bring it to to the body language, and and, and that's it. And the the production in Theodora was very realistic, I would say. Yeah. That's why you had to be realistic. There was no place for being like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so no operatic hands, you know. It is very difficult, especially as a performer, where you have to like, just even from that deep sadness which you feel, uh, go on stage and, and bring joy to people and bring light. And, and that was very difficult at the beginning when the, when the war started and I was still in Warsaw trying to help as much as I could financially for those all, a lot of those charities um, and institutions who, who try to help but also just by collecting stuff from my friends and just bringing it to, to those points in Warsaw those are our neighbors and and I'm in this horrible situation heartbreaking it's really heartwarming to see so many Poles acting and and really seeing it as another human being needs help so I will help I hope we're gonna get something from it and like this this unified feeling of, of nations around the globe, actually.
I really did not have a break. I, during COVID, maybe I had like one month of break in March when I came back from Rouen in France. I uh, came back to, to Poland and I really had like one month of break of like kind of a crisis, uh, mental crisis, because I was really scared. I, like, nobody knew what's gonna happen and then like I lost all of my engagements. <laughs> So I have a friend, very good friend, um, Alexander Dembic, and uh, you could go to work uh, during that time to your office. That was the rule. So I treated. Alexander's house with his piano as our office so like we literally just spent a lot of time together having fun because at the beginning it was just about having fun exploring some material doing some stuff and then we decided like okay let's do something so we got invited to to do a little concert with uh, the Polish radio uh, so we we did it they posted it on their on their YouTube channel and it was uh, it was super fun for the longest time I wanted uh, to record Polish songs. At the beginning I thought I'm gonna do a recital album with Michał, of course, uh, with different like mm, songs, cycles by, for example, Renaldo Ann or Schubert, but then, because I'm presenting those Polish songs, Polish cycles, around the world, basically, and there is a huge, huge reaction to, to them, like when we when we perform them. So I decided like why not doing a Polish album? I know it's risky, but like I did already so many risky things. Those are folk songs, folk lyrics, which even in Polish are very difficult sometimes to understand. But because those are folk songs, they were sung in a very sort of, let's say, folkish way, which sometimes mean a straight tone, which we use in Baroque um, uh, period as an effect. So that way, that's why we thought with Michał that it works really, very, uh, like really well for the countertenor voice because you can do all the effects that are actually used in, in the, what we call, white singing. And uh, the greatest thing, I, I, like the greatest, I would say, surprise for me, Henrik Czyż, who wrote this cycle, Pożegnania, Farewells, uh, which is written for a, for a baritone, bass baritone, and it's very sort of, Saloony vibe, like you are at the bar, sitting there, and like kochał im panią. Da, 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 da. It gives so much freshness into those compos compositions, actually, with our interpretation, but also with the countertenor voice. 